Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, we're going to solve the following problem. Express the integral, we have triple integral over E of F dV as an iterated integral in six different ways, where E is the solid bounded by the given surfaces. So the idea here is that when we're working in the rectangular coordinate system, x, y, and z, Cartesian, dV is dx, dy, dz, or any reordering of those three differentials which we have six possible ordering. So that's why we, we need to set up this integral in six different ways. Whatever the last two differentials are, that's your base region for your solid, okay? And so the solid E is bounded by these three surfaces. We're gonna have to graph them, get a nice graph of E, our solid, and then start the problem. These are some of the hardest you're gonna do in Calc 3. So if you're struggling, totally normal, be patient with yourself. Let's talk about what's going on. So y equals x squared. That's a parabola in the xy plane, but we're graphing in three space, so that curve gets projected parallel to the z-axis and it makes a cylindrical surface. What exactly does it look like? Well, you've got like parabola, something like that, right? And then we project it parallel to the z-axis, so it ends up, you know, Having we can add a little dimension, it goes up and down forever, something like that, right? And then this is the side facing us and whatnot. And then we have the plane z equals zero. So we could just say, all right, that's kind of like the base here, x, y plane. And then this is a line in the y, z plane, but really we project it parallel to the x-axis. It ends up being another plane. So for a hot second, if you graph it, you're gonna have like a little line coming this way. And then it slices through. And the result ends up giving us something that looks like a little ramp, maybe. Yes. So this ends up being one side of the solid E. Okay. And then we have this base here, which is Z equals zero and then the sides, which are determined by y equals x squared. This is a super rough sketch. I just kind of want to visualize, orient myself before I start sketching in the three-dimensional coordinate system with labels and everything, but this can be helpful. Just kind of put everything together roughly. Um, so here we go. Hopefully I do a nice job. Here is the z-axis, x-axis, we'll do like this. And then here's our y-axis. And I'm only gonna go out to, for the parabola, um, x equals plus or minus two. That way y only needs to go up to four. If I went to three, I'd have to go to nine. We'll, we'll wait and see if that's necessary, but it's not, I can already tell. Here, since y plus two z equals four, is going to bound the region as well as z equals zero. If z is zero here, then y is equal to four, so that's as far as we're gonna need to go, okay? Whew, that's good. Okay, so the parabola is gonna go through zero, zero, one, one, negative one, one, and then negative two, four, and two, four. So it's looking something like this. Oh, that was too wiggly and ugly. Hold on. Okay, maybe 1-1 one, one needed to get moved. Negative 1-1. One, one. Let's scooch you over. Okay, fab. Fab, I love it. Now, let's graph y plus 2z equals 4. I also know y equals 4 is going to bound it. So just use your intercepts. If I draw this line in the yz plane, x is equal to 0. So if x is 0 and y is 0, z is 2. And if x is 0 and z is 0, y is 4. So that line is going to go through 0, 4, 0, as well as 0, 0, 2. So let's say that's here. Boom. Okay? And then remember, this parabola is a cylindrical surface. It's getting projected up and down parallel to the z-axis like I showed here. But because this plane, this plane is cutting it, it's only going to come up to this height here and then kind of swoop down, 
swoop down. So let me shade. The, this is because of the plane. I'm graphing here the piece of the plane. Y plus 2Z equals 4. And how it cuts that cylindrical surface. Y equals X squared. Okay. And then this side here, this is still Y equals X squared. And then I have some on the back. And then down here is the base where Z equals 0. And we just have this cute little parabola. Okay. Good. So let's start off, choose one of the planes to be your base region. Let's start with the XY plane, maybe that feels the nicest, <laughs> okay? And then we'll start setting up our iterated integrals. So if we use the XY plane as the base region, look down at your solid E, let's just re-graph, just a nice 2D graph of the XY plane and the base of the solid. So we have that parabola y equals x squared and y goes up to 4, x goes to 2 and negative 2 and I'm going to graph what it looks like here. 1, 1, negative 1, 1 and then it's bounded above by y equals 4, right? You see that? Okay, let's shade it in. So if you use the xy plane as the base, that means those are the last two differentials you're going to be um, setting up in your order of integration. So xy plane as the base means dx dy is last or dy dx. We're going to set up two orders this way. So let me write out a triple integral. Triple, And then we have f. If xy is the base, then dz has to come first. Um, let's just do dy dx for now. So whatever's last, those limits need to be constant. So look at x. The solid is bounded between negative 2 and 2. So those are my outermost limits of integration. Now we need limits for y. So look in the y direction. I always tell my students, draw a line segment that increases, right, in the direction of the variable whose limits you're trying to find. Where it hits first is the lower limit. Where it hits second is the upper limit. So it hits first at the parabola, whose equation is y equals x squared. And it hits second at the line y equals 4. So those are the limits for y. x squared and then 4. Oh, not bad. Now what about z? So for z, you got to go back to the original graph, the solid. And you can do that same trick with the line segment. So z increases this way. You can draw a line segment or a whole line going all the way through the solid, whatever you like. Wherever it hits first is the lower limit for z, and then wherever it hits second is the upper limit. It's kind of hard to see. You're going to have to imagine. It hits first through the xy plane, which is z equals 0. And it hits second at this sloped surface, this plane. Who was that plane? It was y plus 2z equals 4. Well, I have to solve for z since I'm giving limits for that variable. So 2z equals 4 minus y. z equals 2 minus 1 half y. That's where it hits second. So upper limit for z is going to be 2 minus 1 half y. All right. Very good. Now I can easily switch these last two and make it dx dy you don't have to change anything for z because i'm not reordering z i'm only reordering the outer two for the base region and it's not going to be that big of a deal so those two are going to change i still have zero to two minus one half y f dz and then now it's dx dy so remember whatever variables last those limits have to be constant so y is bounded from zero to four and then x is bounded, this time draw a line or line segment, it doesn't matter. Where it hits first, always go increasing order, right? Is the lower limit, where it hits second is the upper limit. Well, this is the parabola y equals x squared, but I have to solve for x in terms of y. So x equals plus or minus rad y. On the left is the negative radical, on the right is the positive radical. So those are my limits for x. Negative rad y 
and then positive rad y. Okay? Very good. Two done, four to go. So xy plane is the base, that's done. Now let's do xz plane as the base. So if I'm using the xz plane as the base region, those are the last two um, differentials that we'll have in our triple integral. So we'll end up with dx dz and dz dx. The first one's gonna be dy. All right, now we gotta draw what the heck is uh, the base region looking like in the xz plane. So kind of, you know, in your head, try to rotate this solid and look directly at the xz plane. It's a parabola opening downwards starting at two. But we obviously need an equation. We're not just going to stare at it willy-nilly. So what do you do? This parabola is involved and it's being projected into the xz plane. So y is equal to x squared. Substitute in x squared for y into this equation of the plane. And then that will give us the projection of the solid using the xz plane as the base. Okay, so I'll reiterate what we're going to do. We take y equals x squared, and I'm going to substitute that into y plus 2z equals 4, which gives me x squared plus 2z equals 4. So now I can, let's just solve for z. So z would be 2 minus 1 half x squared, and now we can draw what the base region looks like in the xz plane. So here's x, here's z. Uh, goes through 2, and then if x is 2 or negative 2, z is 0, which we could see from the original solid anyways, right? If x is 2 or negative 2, z is 0. So here's what we got going on. Beautiful. Shade it in. And let's figure out our bounds. So, Triple integral, f, I'm going to do dy first, and then let's do dz dx. So if x is last, limits for x have to be constant. They're from negative 2 to 2. Then I need limits for z. z goes from 0 to the parabola, which is 2 minus 1 half x squared. And then what about y? So look back at the solid, okay? Let me erase this, this is from other stuff. So look at y, let me shade this back in. In the increasing direction, okay? Draw, draw a line through the solid in the direction of the positive y-axis, boom. What did it hit first? It hit x squared first, and then it hit this plane, the y plus 2z equals 4 second. Can you see that? If you're cutting through, cutting through, it hits this curved side first, which is y equals x squared, and then it hits this purple plane second. This was the purple plane. And I need to give limits for y, so this is y equals x squared, and then this is y equals 4 minus 2z. Ooh, okay. I know, that's spicy. x squared, 4 minus 2z. Okay, then it's pretty easy to switch it to dx dz last. I'm going to keep dy first. So this is still x squared. This is still 4 minus 2z. And then we'll switch it, dx, dz. So if dz is last, limits for z have to be constant. It's going to go 0 to 2. And then now limits for x, okay, lower limit is left half of the parabola. Upper limit is right half of the parabola. Let's solve for x, though. So x equals plus or minus rad 4 minus 2z. The positive radical is the right half. The negative radical is the left half. So we have rad 4 minus 2z as the upper limit and the negative rad 4 minus 2z as the lower limit. Good, you guys. You're doing great. I'm proud of us all. 
Okay, last one. So we've done xy plane, xz plane. So we need to do yz plane as the base. yz plane as the base. And this one's a little easier, actually. x is equal to 0. If we're involving the yz plane as the base, this is the region that we're going to be looking at. It's going to be a triangle in the yz plane. Can you see? Let me erase this. We're going to just have this sweet little triangle. I'd like to color it in here. YZ plane as the base. Okay, so I'm just going to graph Y plus 2Z equals 4, and we'll proceed from there. I'll keep the Z axis going up so it coincides with our 3D graph. Here's Y. Here's 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is y plus 2z equals 4. Boom, boom. And we're shading all of this loveliness. Okay, great. So that means we're going to integrate with respect to x first, and then y and z are last. 1, whoa, whoa, whoa. 2, 3, f, dx first, then d, let's do dz, dy. Okay. So limits for y have to be constant since it's last. It goes from 0 to 4. What about z? z goes from 0 up until the line. So 2z is 4 minus y. z is 2 minus 1 half y. So z goes from 0 to 2 minus 1 half y. And then what about x? Ooh, go back to the 3D graph. Go back, go back. Okay. So imagine you draw a line through the solid moving in the positive x direction. Where does it hit first? It hits y equals x squared, the left side, and then it hits second, y equals x squared, the right side. Do you see that? It hits this blue outer edge of the solid. First the left side, second the right side. That was y equals x squared. But since I'm giving limits for x, I have to have x as a function of y. So it's plus or minus rad y. It hits the negative radical first, and then it hits the positive radical second. Okay, those are my limits for x. So positive rad y upper limit, negative rad y lower limit. And then we've got one more ordering to do. Now, I'm going to keep x first, and then we're just going to do dy, dz. So this is still negative rad y. This is rad y. I didn't switch that around. Now, z is last, so limits for z have to be constant, 0 to 2. And then what about y? So y goes from 0 up until the line. The line is 4 minus 2z. So 0 up until 4 minus 2z. And we are done. Hallelujah. How was that? Spicy, I know. Um, in, the, in the beginning, you're just going to barely be hanging on and trying to make sure it makes sense. Then you're going to try to do it on your own. Then you're going to go take some unsuspecting person who lives with you and explain it to them. And you're going to do a beautiful job and then you're going to feel confident. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. This is so difficult. So don't, don't fret. Don't fret. Um, if you need full-length video lectures on Calc 3 topics or any other Calc topics, check out the rest of my YouTube channel. I have videos linked in the description, and you can also play around. I have stuff organized into playlists. You can also catch me on Instagram and TikTok, Math TV with Professor V. I'll be back soon. Love you guys. Bye.